The story I'm going to tell is about the dragon of Krakow. Krakow, Krakow is named, the city is named after the king at the time. The king, and his name was Krak. And so Krakow, the name of the city. Beautiful city. We were there a couple years ago. And one of the things that was most amazing is the castle of Vavo, is a castle. And there's a cave under the cliff. And in that cave, one day, a dragon came and said, this looks like a perfect place for me to make a home. It's right, just perfect for me. He looked up, he saw the castle, he saw people, he saw fields in the distance that were full of cows and sheep. And he thought, dinner, it's right here. I'll just make myself at home. And that's exactly what he did. I'm going to need some help in a little bit if some kids would like to come up and help. And so if you'd like to come up, please, and sit on the floor, come on up. Well, the people did not have many celebrations after the dragon moved in. The people did not have celebrations because the dragon, well, he was kind of eating their food. He was eating their food. Can you believe it? You'd go out and there's your cow and it's gone. It wasn't there. What are you gonna do, right? Where's my cow? Where's our cow? Did it run off? And no, it didn't because there were some bones hanging around somewhere. Uh-oh, it must have been the dragon, the dragon of Krakow. And he was a fire-breathing dragon. I think I forgot to say that. At night, it would, oh, you'd see the fire, and you see the fire. If you go there now, even to this day, there is a dragon off of the castle, and about every 15 minutes, it lifts its head and fire comes out of its mouth. Well, the king was just disgusted. We can't have that dragon here. Maybe I'll find a knight, a knight, someone who would, would slay the dragon and we can all be safe again. Because, you know, after there's so many cows and sheep, what are they going to start eating? <laughs> what? People! They're going to start <laughs> eating people! That's right! They're gonna... And so the jester said, why don't you have a contest and give out a whole bunch of gold? And if you give out a whole bunch of gold, we can... Oh my goodness, it would be fantastic. Well, and then all these knights came. And guess what I brought with me? I brought a knight's helmet. Wow. It's very heavy. If you put it on your head, you're going to have to have some help. Who would like to try it on? No? Okay. Well, if you want to try it on later when there's nobody watching, cameras please, uh, <laughs> then you can. It's very heavy. And I, and I'm not going to... I don't want to drop it. So this, and I won't put it on my head either because I might fall over. That's how heavy it is. These knights came from all over the kingdom. They came from Hungary. They came from points of Poland and other places, Romania. They came from Germany and they all came to slay the dragon. But it didn't work. The dragon, well, he kind of ate some of them because, you know, and he kind of spit out the pieces of the metal. It was terrible. And then finally this guy, who was a cobbler. Now do you know what a cobbler is? A cobbler is somebody that fixes shoes. They make boots, they fix shoes, and he was kind of a silly guy, and he kind of walked over, and you know, I'd like to see the king. And they said, who are you? He goes, well, I'm just a cobbler. And they said, uh, what do you need to see the king for? Well, I'd like to help him uh, get rid of the dragon. And they all went, yeah, right, right. He goes, well, I'll just wait. And he waited all night long. He waited. And in the morning, he was still waiting outside of the castle. And finally, somebody said, well, you might as well come in and see the king. Come on in. So he came in, and he had his little bitty hammer that he fixed shoes with. And he had some, you know, big needles and some thread and, and, and you know, to fix shoes. And the king said, what are you going to do? He goes, I'd like to slay your dragon. And the king said, really? 
Yeah, and he wasn't a big guy at all. And he said, uh, yeah, I'd sure like to. He goes, well, arms run. Send them, take him to the armory. We'll get him a helmet. We'll get him some swords. We'll put armor on him. And he said, now wait just a minute. Wait just a minute. I don't need that kind of armor. No? Well, how are you going to protect yourself from the dragon? And he said, well, I won't have to. So guess what? He said, here's what I need. I need a couple people to help. Somebody who knows about sewing. I need some sulfur. I need some tar. And I need, oh, I don't know, maybe a uh, blanket of some sort. And maybe a sheepskin. And they all went, well, that's the strangest combination of things we ever saw. So they got him for it. Well, here's what he did. They brought a blanket, a quilt, actually. But it looked like it would be time for dinner, at least in modern times, doesn't it? And they put the quilt down. And in the middle of the quilt, he said, let's all stretch it out. So when I get to a point, I'm going to ask you guys to each take a corner of the quilt, OK? And he said, where's the sulfur? And he mixed up the sulfur and the tar. And I don't know if he put some sticks or other things in there to get it to go and burn it. But I didn't want to bring a real sheet because I thought, you know, with, uh, you know, so I brought a blue rug. So just pretend this is a sheet, everybody. Does it look like a sheet? Kind of? Bah, bah. All right, so he took all that tar and sulfur and everything, and he put it, now get on each corner, four of you please. Somebody over there, somebody on that corner. Okay, are you going to come help with her? Perfect, come on over. And he put the sheep inside of the middle of the blank, blanket, all right, and then he said, okay, I need my helpers. All right, and they carried it up, lift it up, please. As they lifted it up, they walked, and we're just going to turn around in a circle. We pretend we walked for a long time, okay? Turn around, turn around. Oh my goodness, we're walking. That sheep is heavy. Remember, it was probably a real sheep. But as they walked around, they walked around, they walked for about a half a mile, then they got to the place where the dragon lived. And he said, okay, hold on to it. And then he got some soldiers to help stake it up hold it up higher hold it up higher now spread out a little bit so you can't and that's how they staked it and then he said okay everybody you can leave now and let's go back on top of the hill by Bobo Castle and we'll watch so let's just set it down when they got up there and you guys can you guys can sit now when they got up there to the top of the hill the dragon yawned, bit out a little bit of fire. <coughs> you know, they coughed a little bit too with the fire. And, uh, oh, breakfast, look at this. And he came sauntering over, <laughs> took a couple of deep breaths, <laughs> got some big fire out of his mouth, and guess what? He gobbled it up. Just like that. He ate that sheep and the sulfur and the tar, and things started to happen. <laughs> things started to happen in his stomach. It grumbled. It rumbled. Oh no, I don't know if I feel too well. And what happened is the tar and the sulfur started burning in his stomach, and oh, oh no. And he tried to catch some breath. And he thought, water, water, there's the sea. The Vizsla River was right there. He drank water. The water did not put it out. It just made it boiling in his stomach. And as it was boiling in his stomach, he was going crazy. And then, boom, he blew up. And that was the end of the Dragon of Krakow. The people had a celebration. They probably had uh, a Zizinki celebration at that time. Who knows when? It was this time of year. And they went back to the king's castle. And the king, as promised, said, okay, I'm going to give you all of those ducats. And he gave him a whole bag of gold. And, and 
I said, are you going to stick around here? And he said, why, sure, I've got a whole dragon skin. I'll start making some boots for everybody. And that's what he did. He made boots, he made shoes, he made some dragon belts, and he stayed there all of his life. That's the dragon of Krakow. Thank you. Do you guys think that's a true story? That's the cave right there. You can go see it right now today. You to. Wow. You better wear the helmet if you're going to. Oh, yeah. oh that's good. I didn't even think about that. I feel how heavy it is. I feel how heavy it is. I won't put it on. Wow. Wow. Do you want to try it on? Or just feel how heavy it is. Lift it. You got it? I'm letting go. Whoa.